that as much as I love uh, Bill's early work and has as great as Fables uh, was, you know, he's uh, notorious for being a, a, a bit conservative uh, and a little bit of, of, for the want of a better term, a misogynist. There was a, a convention panel about women friendly comics at Gen Con in 2015, and he was the moderator. And basically, he, uh, you know, um, hijacked the the panel uh, with uh, talking about, well, I should be able, why can't I write women characters or why can't I write people of color and so on and so forth. So um, that being said, his early his early work is just so important uh as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's, it's some of the best stuff of the very late uh, Bronze Age uh, of comics. But still, he managed to manages to put his uh, his uh, two cents in when they're not welcome, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to go. Uh, I, I'm going to jump around the article. I'm actually going to go to the end of the article because I want to talk about uh Bill Willingham's experience with Rev, because uh, they got some great quotes from Bill. Now, listen, uh, you know, I love Willingham's early work. Uh, his stuff, you know, when he was drawing a TSR and the ads that he did for Dungeons and Dragons that were printed in comics, and then uh, 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 both Death Duel with the Destroyers and Wait, the Island of Dr. Apocalypse, which were adventures for villains and vigilantes. Was he that classic TSR ad that was on the back of like every comic back in the day? Yeah, it was the one that was like multiple, um, it was uh, like a uh, uh, multiple episodic um, comic book about uh, there was a, a fighter, um, there was a fighter, an elf. A wizard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's Wellingham. Played childhood um, mystery answered. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and like I said, he, and, you know, he did a ton of stuff for TSR. He did uh, Death Duel with the Destroyers and the Island of Dr. Apocalypse, which were villains and vigilantes adventures. And hmm. he used those as the base for the elementals. Saker is Dr. Apocalypse. And the character was actually based on Leon Bazaar, who was the co-owner uh, with his son, Scott Bazaar, of Fantasy Games Unlimited. And if, if I mean, if, if I ever d- decide to rip off uh, Robert Evans and do uh, Behind the Bastards of the comic book industry, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, nerddom, I should say, uh, uh, Scott and Leon Bazaar will definitely get an episode. Uh, we'll talk about them. Uh, they basically wanted exorbitant amounts of money for the rights to Villains and Vigilantes and kept uh, Jeff D and Jack Herman from getting the rights back uh, on um, tons of uh, uh, fantasy games, unlimited role playing games from the 80s. But we digress uh, about dirtbags. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, Let's see. Sorry. There's just so much to say about what this guy's doing that it's hard to pick a jump off. Yeah, of. yeah, it's just it, it's incredible. Um, because every every time you finish like hearing something, then there's just somebody else comes out and is just like, "No, I got screwed over. No, I got screwed over." Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find uh exactly the 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 quote from Bill Willingham. I I have it here. Uh, well, okay. Oh, so sorry. Uh, so before Perif- terrific production and young blood reds crowning achievement in comics was Comico. Uh, at the time writers and artists like Wagner spoke, out to the comics journal about Rev's unusual contracts and lack of payment for services rendered. But Willingham said that didn't stop him from selling the elementals. He told IO9 that Rev, uh, uh, that the deal with Rev came up with stimul- stipulations like appearing at conventions to talk up the handover. 
Comico paid for his travel along with several other writers and artists only to find out Rev was putting them in the outside room of his suite in a barracks with nine or ten beds shoved into a single area. Rev confirmed that he took Comico staffers to cons but couldn't recall any details. Uh, Comico- I don't remember forcing a sleepaway camp to happen in your, in your, uh, in your hotel room. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Comico quietly stopped producing comics in 1997 following years of inconsistent releases and series that never went past a few issues, ending with an issue of the Elemental Sex Specials Volume 2, the first issue of the short-lived X-rated series Liz Willingham and its writers. But he told io9 he'd actually turned in an issue of the Elementals as part of his contractual obligations only to have Re- Rev rename it without his knowledge or consent and slap on a salacious cover of a woman having sex with a dolphin. As Rev- one does. Yes. Rev confirmed that Willingham's final issue was turned into an 18 plus sex special and told us it was my opinion that it was wrong to force under 18 year olds to not have an issue because I was a prude and thought in 1990s that any sex was too much for kids. They were underage, which is why it was made into its own title. But when asked to explain why the publisher put bestiality on the cover, he didn't answer. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yeah, we need to protect the kids, but here's a comic with a woman having sex yeah. with a dolphin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, now <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I'm having all these breaks because there's – so much stuff here. I no, I get it because I, I, I wish you could see that I'm just shaking my head. I'm just I, shaking I, my head. I, I thought I had uh, cut and pasted uh, Willingham's uh, quote about trying to get paid. Uh, oh, okay. So um, uh, Willingham also claimed Rev tried to cancel his final paycheck. So he drove from Seattle to Chicago where Comico was located to demand it in person. He said he was either going to leave with the money he was promised or break enough of Rev's stuff that it would make up the difference. But he ultimately got paid. Rev denied that Willingham's final paycheck was ever canceled. But he doesn't remember whether the writer came to see him at his office in Chicago. Willingham final payment was never canceled for rights or writing. To bring up such nonsense 30 years later is meaningless if Willingham was paid, he said. So there's that. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. You can bring up things from the past if they're just awful. Yeah. So now, as if this wasn't enough, Mr. Rev has returned to the comic book scene with a new publishing company, and I'm making the air quotes. Hey, hey, I, it's like I, I said to you before we started. I find it hard to say that this is a comic book company because you can't be a comic book company unless you release comic books. I can call myself a baker all day long. If I don't make a cake, I'm not a baker. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So, and, okay. I'm just going to read the first paragraph from the io9 article. And this says, this says it all. Uh, And then, uh, there's a couple other points, but I, I, I don't even know if we would even have to make them. Uh, and, and people can find out the rest of the, the, this guy's dirtbaggery with recent creators. Great term, by the way, dirtbaggery. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Yeah, so okay, I'm, so I'm uh, that now. Uh, from the io9 article, once again, uh, the novel coronavirus pandemic has devastated the comic book industry. So it seemed too good to be true that one publisher was not only hiring in mass, It was recruiting new talent, but it could come at a price. The company would keep half of their pay until 90% of Americans were vaccinated against COVID-19. Meanwhile, meanwhile, they're saying that only 50% of the country feels comfortable getting vaccinated at any point. And in order to get to a level of uh, safe immunity, you only have to get to 70%. And this guy's going 90 well, that's the thing also, is that with the anti-vax community, we're never going to get to 90%. Get there. Yeah. We're lucky if we get to 70. Yeah, seriously. Um, and, and let us please. Yes. Okay, once uh-huh. again, uh, uh, <laughs> he's a scam artist, comic book creator Sam McNally said. The way everything is written is just to benefit Andrew Rev and terrific production. And screw over writers and artists financially the best way you can. 
They included prohibiting creators from accepting new work if payments from terrific production weren't overly late, requiring artists to turn over original artists on pages in exchange for a share of the comic book's net royalties, and now the infamous COVID-19 clause. That meant the publisher could hold half of creators' total page rate during the ongoing pandemic. Uh, io9 said they viewed several of the contracts in question and can verify the clauses. So this guy is, and the, the bait that he's using is that he owns the rights to Rob Liefeld's Youngblood. Which, I mean, if you're going to have, like, bait, like... Is that the bait you really want to go hunting with? Well, you know, th- there's an artist by the name of Gabriel Santos. He's going after international guys. He's going after, because, you know, a, a, a lot of international artists, you know, come at a, a lesser page rate uh, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. you know. And But there's actually something in here I want to read about these contracts that I can tell you is absolute bullshit because I, um, just this week, uh, um uh, uh, brokered uh, a deal for my wonderful collaborator, the amazing Amazian, who is the uh, illustrator who adapted Big Black Standard Attica from Jared Ronmuth and Frank Big Blacksmith's uh, original script. Um, and uh, uh, it's just absolute BS what he tried to put into this contract about um, how he would pay people because it's it's uh generally it's um it's done in uh tier payments um and this is rev we're talking about okay. yeah this is rev we're talking about okay. but but uh, uh but santos um uh, uh santos a newer artist commissioned by terrific to work on supreme a standalone series for a young blood character um i didn't know oh yeah supreme is part of young blood so the, i guess they own that too does that mean? Um, I wonder. Does that mean they have like brigade and like trying to think what all the things under that umbrella was back in the I, day? I guess I don't know. I don't think they have Wildcats because right? Cause no, Wildcats. Wildcats yeah. was was Lee. Wildcats is now yeah. Wildcats is now owned owned by DC slash AT and T. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I was super excited. So this guy Gabriel Santos is like I was super excited for nobody to get a chance to work on young blood characters popular characters in the 90s. It was a great chance to get started. Uh, Really what got me excited was a lot of promises this guy had. If all goes well, I can get you some more covers through these books. Or if this book does really well, I can get you up your page rate for the second book. Little promises like that. Um, The creator also said Terrific Russian was set to pay them after completion of each issue, which took the creators we spoke to one to three months on average. Rev defended the practice, telling io Nine some art, new artists like all people can't be trusted without how to having a security deposit to remind them to do five issues. That's smart. But it's something lawyer Jamal Hennessy, who specializes in work in the comic book industry, said should have been a red flag. Um, Hennessy said writers and artists should always get always ensure that there's a tiered payment system in place before getting to work. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, one payment could be made on signing the contract. One payment could be made on delivering the thumbnails or the rough sketches. One payment could be made for the 22 page book. Then let's say every four pages, another page comes, a payment comes through. He said that way, if there's any dispute about what's going on, then you actually understand what the problem is up front. So these artists are not out for weeks and maybe months of work and not getting paid. And that's exactly what uh, I was talking about with uh, with Ame, the way uh, he gets his uh, payments broken up over, you know, depending on the amount of pages monthly. Uh, you know, he's, he's currently working on a book that's going to take him about eight months to do. So he charges, you know, his page rate for, you know, the uh, the book's going to be 120 pages. Okay. You know, he, 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 and he splits, you know, this is my page rate for that amount. We break that up over eight months and you pay me over eight months. Um, so that he gets a paycheck and, yeah, and can do things like pay bills. Yeah. And yeah, it's money up front. Yep. Um, like I said, this article is, is so chunky, and I, I cut stuff out of it, but I'm, I'm missing it. It's huge. It. It's, a hu- it's a huge article. It's yeah. definitely worth reading. 
Uh, well, but anyway, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to bother. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up because this is we, we this is supposed to be a 15 minute, uh, okay. <laughs> 15 okay. minute segment.